What's going on, everybody? It is February 2nd, and we have finally made it to Friday. We have an okay slate of games tonight. Uh, nine games on the docket. Um, you know, Raptors-Blazers should be fun. Sixers-Heat is a good game. I don't know how great it is from a fantasy perspective. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, last night went okay. Uh, I was able to double up, so I'm happy with that. This is the the dime, the single entry, single entry series uh, entry. I don't know what. Wow, single entry, single entry series entry. Just saying the same words over and over again. Anyway, this is the lineup that I played last night. Uh, Russ was fine. Delon Wright though, whew, the old 1.4, um, just brutal. Obviously, assumed that he was going to get. You know, at least just normal minutes, but even a slight bump with Van Vliet and uh, CJ Miles out. But that did not turn out to be the case. Just an absolute dreadful performance. Just happy I got back up to 300. Uh, I really liked Wiggins last night after I started putting everything together. Uh, I felt like Butler and Giannis would sort of cancel each other out. And then not having Bledsoe in the backcourt I thought would be a real benefit for Wiggins just defensively um I thought he would have a much better shot it turns out I was wrong I mean you know 24 is fine but you know I was hoping for a bigger night there um Selden was super chalky you know once the Memphis news came out you know you knew, you knew he would be especially on a night where there wasn't really any other value um played like garbage 11 points but it's what you get for a guy that's 3600 um, very, very happy with moving to Paul George. Uh, I had the money to spend up to get Butler in that spot. I could have just, I could have changed nothing except for moving to Butler. And I thought that it would just be a better game for Oklahoma City. The, the potential seemed higher for Paul George, um, even though I could pay up. So I'm glad I sat on that. George was 61 last night. Um, pretty much saved me. Went for what? seven and a half x or something uh, once Gordon was scratched uh, I was okay with going with Gerald Green just figured it was a minutes play didn't need to do too much he did just enough um, very happy with Blake 49 and a half um, I thought that he would want to make a nice impression at home in his debut uh, it didn't seem like a situation where he was just going to tank a lineup I was hoping for even bigger and it started off that way um, but, you know, no complaints out of, out of Blake whatsoever. He hit value. That's all you can ask for. Taj was just sort of the guy that worked at that spot. I did like him the most out of anybody on Minnesota. I thought that he would have a little bit easier time um, on the blocks, but, you know, they won by 19, so it's kind of hard. And then uh, Capella. I would have liked to pay up to Jokic. I just couldn't get there because lack of value opening up, um, which is a shame considering Jokic went for 72 fantasy points last night. But I'm very happy with Capella. Um, you know, 7 plus X is is more than okay with me. So I was in the money, which is all you can ask for. Um, I see, like, the, the signs of what could have been better, but you know, the chances of me not being on DeLon Wright were pretty low. So he was always going to be an anchor for me. Tonight's a new night. Nine games. Let's get into it. So first up is the Hornets. Um, they are hosting the Indiana Pacers. They are three and a half point favorites, and uh, they have the eighth highest implied total. Kemba would be first, um, eighty seven hundred on Fanduel, eighty eight hundred on DK. The price keeps climbing. Um, it's just so hard for Kemba to provide value on that number. But he's had one, two, three, four, five, five out of his last. I got to shorten that filter. Uh, buy a bundle. So five of it. Well, now now the math is different. One, two, three, four. Nope, it's the same. Five of his last seven have been in the forties. So he's a four for me, just because he's been so steady. But there's not a ton of upside in that number. Dwight, 
is 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. So you're looking for 50. Last two games have been uh, back down to earth for him. Um, might be somebody to look at if we get any weird news on Miles Turner. Uh, he's still feeling some soreness in his knee. So if they have to drop down to Sabonis, um, I think that Dwight could be someone to pay attention to. But again, at these prices, it's really tough. One guy I would be interested in in this game would be Nick Batum. 6,100 on FanDuel right now. 6,400 on DK. Uh, you would need 30 for him to hit value. He has a 36, a 40, and a 43 in his past two weeks. Um, it's just a... There's, there's upside in that number, so I'm going to say Batum is a three for me. And then the one guy to pay attention to, um, even though Cody Zeller is back, he's still going to be a little bit limited minutes-wise, and they don't have Marvin Williams, which should mean um, a decent chunk of Frank Kaminsky. So he's 4,300 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. You need, um, like, you know, you're, you're hoping 25. I had 19 and 30 minutes um, two nights ago, which isn't the best. But another guy where I think there's a lot of value in his number. Now, nothing to go crazy over, but you know he might he might open things up for you. 4,300 is a pretty decent salary. And then finally, MKG, uh, 4,800 on Fanduel, 4,500 on DK. You were looking for 25. Um, it's tough to get there, in my opinion, um, but I'd be okay with him on DraftKings. He's a DK4. Now to the Pacers. Um, Pacers 103.25 implied total is 13th. We want to take a look at Oladipo to start. Who is ninety or nine thousand on FanDuel, eighty six hundred on DK? So price is coming down a little bit. Uh, not the best matchup for him, but needs forty five. Um, has only done that once in the past two weeks. Let's see. Let's take a closer look here. Yeah, I'm gonna have a hard time getting to Oladipo here. Just, I don't like that price. Thad Young is 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Uh, that might be difficult to. Needs 30 and change. One, two, three, four, five games in the 30s, so maybe it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, he's just a four for me. I don't. I don't really love this game. There's a ton of other options out there, so no sense in forcing it. Collison at 5,900 or 5,800, depending on the site. You would need 30. He's done that in three of four, four of five. Um, I don't mind Collison there, actually. I'm him a three. And then... Um, I don't have any interest in Turner, even though his price isn't bad. Uh, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I'm just a little nervous about the soreness in the knee. He would need 35 for value, which he hit in the last one, and almost hit uh, previously on the minutes limit. I won't have him on FanDuel. I think there's just going to be better options. But on DK at 6,300, where you can play more than one center, no issues with it. You just got to be aware that, you know, there's a decent, or not a decent chance, but there's a chance that he doesn't make it through that game. We head to Boston now. Celtics hosting the Atlanta Hawks. Um, nine point favorites at home would be the sixth highest implied total. This is the only line that does not exist right now. Uh, this is uh, the Josh special. So could move around a little bit, but at that spot... Um, Kyrie is the first person to look at. 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Uh, he would need 45. He's been in the 40s in his last five games. Uh, sat out two nights ago. Also had a 58-pointer. I like Kyrie here a lot. Um, Hawks defense, from a fantasy perspective, not very good. Um, again, Kyrie is, 
there's more upside in Kyrie's number barely than uh, Kemba. I would prefer Kyrie to Kemba in this case just because of the matchup, but they're kind of similar. Um, I would, yeah, I would prefer Kyrie to Kemba. So Al Horford is 7,700 on FanDuel and 7,600 on DK. You're looking for like 38. Um, that's not a direction that I think that I'm going to be going this tonight. But, you know, he had 37 in his last time out, two games in the 40s. Uh, so it's not outlandish, but I don't like the revenge narrative for Horford here. Um, Jalen Brown or Tatum, basically the same price. They're all at what amounts to 5,900, so call it six. We need 30 out of Brown or Tatum. Um, Brown hasn't done that in the past two weeks. Tatum has had two separate 30-point games. I'm going to prefer Tatum. Sorry, they're both fours. Eh, you know what? Yeah, that, that's fine. They're both fours. I love the matchup for the Celtics, but they're they're just not a great fantasy team to focus on. Only other person I'd be looking at would be Marcus Morris, uh, 5,100. He'd need 25. Um, had 33 in the last one, a couple 26s previously. Um, I would say that he's actually a three. Then we go to Atlanta. Hawks with... You know, arguably the most difficult matchup on the slate. 99.5 implied total would be 17th. Um, Schroeder is 7,000 on FanDuel and 6,700 on DK. How much has that tumbled? It seems like a lot. Yeah, he's he was at 8,000 a week plus ago, now down to seven. Shoulder is dinged up a little bit. So you do want to pay attention to news here. Uh, but he's a straight three for me. And I think that you can make a case that he's a two if we get any news about his shoulder being okay. Um, that price is just too low for him. Is really all there is to it. Uh, otherwise, the only other thing that I'd be looking at would probably be like Ilya Sova. 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Um, you're looking for like 25 out of him. Gets there from time to time. Uh, not a ton of value. Not the best matchup, but I'm happy to say that Ilyasova is a 4. I don't know why I'm happy to say that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably it. it. It's hard to like much on Atlanta tonight. Let's go to Brooklyn. Nets hosting the Lakers 109.5 implied total is fourth and uh, they are one and a half point favorites at home actually oh that coffee is good this morning it's gonna fuel my day so Spencer Dinwiddie 6500 on FanDuel 6700 on DK 32 um, got there in the most recent one there's just too many guys healthy now to like really go crazy over Dinwiddie they should trade him this is the perfect time to capitalize he's got a super low contract next year not even guaranteed now nah, they might have picked up that guarantee already either way um, you know he's not gonna be a part of their future trade him now get an asset back Damari Carroll, 5,800 on both sites, so you need 30. He's done that twice in the past seven. Um, has been very steady. He's just a four. Not a ton of interest in Alan Crabb at 4,500. Pass there. Quincy AC, 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. So you just need 20. 
Uh, hit that in the last one, and that's it. Uh, I'm just going to say he's a four. I was expecting more value here. Turns out, no. Okay, Jared Allen. 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. You're looking for 25. He had 37 um, two nights ago. He had back-to-back 25-plus point games uh, a week ago. So he can get there. Um, if you're looking for a value play at center, there are worse options than Jared Allen. He's a three for me. And then uh, Levert is just not going to get enough minutes at basically 5,000. Um, if he's in, I just I don't trust it. And then finally you have Okafor. Uh, only played 14 minutes against the Sixers, which is kind of surprising. Um, he would need 20. I'm going to have a hard time getting there just because I don't trust the minutes. Lakers. Ooh, this one will be interesting. 108 implied total is 7th. This is a great matchup for them. Um, I'm really anxious to dig in here. So Brandon Ingram is 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Looking for 32 out of Ingram. You know, had a rough one the last time out, but back-to-back -back games of value previously. I'm more than okay with having Brandon Ingram in this situation. He's a three. Still nobody like popping off the page for me. <sighs> KCP 5200. He needs 26. Um, he's done that once in his past four. Again, nothing to go crazy about. But the matchup is there. Julius Randle is the guy that I'm most interested in in this game. Um, 6,600, so you need 33. He's hit 33 in three of his last five. Um, you know, been really steady. Uh, Brooklyn terrible against centers. I know Randle isn't necessarily a traditional center, but you know, does play a decent amount of minutes there. What is his minute split there? Nope, not chasing Randall. Fucking A. Wrong Randall. There we go. I assume it's predominantly center at this point, but... Um, yeah, 75% of his minutes have been at center, so that's good. Uh, Randall's a three, but he's probably more like a two and a half. I can't go too crazy over him because I don't think there's a ton of uh, value in the number, but I think that he's in line for a really big game. Um, so yeah, I would say that right now he's my center is probably the easiest way to say that. Uh, Kuzma at 5,100 needs 25. Bloom is off the rose for him, but again, it's a good matchup. It's a four, though, for me. Only other guy I want to look at would be Larry Nance. Um, I've got him at 25 minutes. He's 5,400, so that would be 27 fantasy points. Uh, he's had a 33, a 29, and a 42 all in the last two weeks. So ending up with Larry Nance at power forward is not the worst thing in the world. Raptors. Raptors are hosting the Blazers. Uh, four and a half point favorites at home, and the Raptors have the third highest implied total. Need more coffee. Okay. DeMar DeRozan, 8,700 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DraftKings. Oh, boy. Um, let's just say we want him to get to 45. It's a game that fits him really well. Uh, takes a ton of shots in the mid-range. 60% um, of his shots come in the mid-range. Uh, Portland gives up you know, almost the most uh, shots in the mid-range. So if DeRozan can find his stroke, that's pretty interesting. 
Uh, he hit 45 in the last one, or last night, rather. Um, but this is going to be three games in four nights. At least they're at home. Can get to 40. Uh, I think this is a pretty good spot for him. It's certainly a good spot on DraftKings. What's uh, DeRozan's history against the Blazers? Just solidly in the 40s. I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 3, and DeRozan's going to be the first two I throw out there tonight. A lot of that is price. 7,700. Um... You know, you need mid 40s to for him to hit 6x. That's a really realistic game for him. Um, yeah, I like that. At that price, I like it. Lowry, 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Might as well check his history against them. Nothing crazy, but very solid. Needs 36 plus. Went for 52 last night. Um, had a 53 pointer earlier in this two week stretch. Hard to not like Lowry here. I know they're on the back to back. Um, he's a three. Probably more like a two and a half. I just really like uh, the Raptors backcourt tonight. I would probably take DeRozan over Lowry. Uh, just because I think the matchup is a little bit better for him. But I'd be fine with either one of them. I'm anxious to see how much they pop up, particularly Lowry. Um, Abaka, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. You need 30. Um, just hasn't been there. Looks like the DraftKings salary is up a little bit. I don't really have any interest in Abaka. Balanchunas, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, so we're looking for 30 and change. Had 26 last night, started off strong. He's been playing pretty well. You know, 34, the 60, the 47. Um, he's a 4 for me, though. I don't think this is the best matchup. And uh, Delon Wright can eat it. I'm good there. Assuming uh, CJ Miles and Van Fleet play. We'll go to the Blazers. Uh, Portland, 105.25 implied total is 11th. They're uh, four and a half point underdogs. So first up is Dame. 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. You're looking 45. He's done that, you know, basically four out of his last seven. He had a 53, he had two 44s and a 46. Um, what's Dame's history against Toronto look like? Always been relatively solid. I'd be okay with Dame. CJ. Coming off the monster game, 50 uh, legit points in three quarters. 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. He needs 40, and that's just uh, that's a bit too expensive for me. I'll call him a four just to, you know, a little hot hand type thing, but I'm not a big fan of CJ tonight. Aminu, down to 4,900 now, which makes it a little bit more appealing. He would need 25. Um, had three straight games above value before uh, coming in under a couple nights ago. Also only played 21 minutes. Um, so I would have some interest at Aminu, or in Aminu um, as a Tier 3 guy for me. And then Evan Turner. Um, I'm... He's a four. I don't want to. I don't want to end up with him. I hope there's just more value out there. Nurkic is the last guy that I would really want to look at. Sixty-two hundred on Fanduel, fifty-nine hundred on DK. So we want to get around thirty. 
Um, had 43 a couple nights ago. Had a 47 and a 48. I mean, this is a guy that can go anywhere from 10 to 50, which is uh, pretty terrifying. You would think that Toronto is not really the best option there. Um, I'm going to say that he is a 4. I could see a situation where Nurkic has a really monster night. I'm going to look into him a little bit more. How has he ever played against Toronto? Not that I tend to care about that in this case. Yeah, never been very good, including this year. Just one good game last year with Denver. Okay, let's get out of here. We're going to Milwaukee. Bucks hosting the Knicks. Um... Four and a half point favorites at home, and uh, they they would have the tenth highest implied total. As of right now, I'm assuming that Bledsoe is playing, and that Brogdon is out. Uh, for those that had Brogdon last night, sorry about that. Um. Okay, so Middleton is 7,500, 7,300 on DK. Let's check out NBA Wowie without Brogdon and see if that matters at all. I don't get the sense that it will. Okay, grabbing Brogdon on. And grabbing Brogdon off. So it actually negatively impacts Middleton, but it's been positive for Giannis, Snell, Bledsoe, and Henson. Interesting. Middleton would need 38. He's had four of his last six at that number. Um, I don't entirely love the matchup, but I don't. I don't hate it. He's just a three. Giannis, though, 12,000 flat on FanDuel, 10,8 on DK. So you need 60. Not the best in, uh, not the best performance last night, but had 60 in the previous ma or previous game, 78 um, a couple nights ago. At home, they don't really have anybody that can deal with Giannis. Um, what's Giannis' history against the Knicks? Has played well against them in the past. He's just a three for me. I think I'm going to have a bit more interest in um, that Thunder and Pelicans game for studs. Now, Bledsoe, on the other hand, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. If I know that he's healthy, and I'd like to think that we would know that sort of information by lock, but we'll see. Um, he needs to get to 35. He's done that once, um, you know, has been dinged up. I'm hoping that he plays. Uh, I like him a lot at that number. If I can get confirmation that he is going to play, I will almost definitely have him at point guard. I'm going to say he's a two. I really like him tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. You just got to know he's on the court. There's a caveat. Uh, no thanks on Tony Snell, but I will look at Henson, 5,500. Needs 27. Um, just sort of always around that mark, but uh, 4,800 on DraftKings makes it even more appealing. I'm just going to say he's a three. And Sterling Brown at minimum salary on FanDuel. Um, we'll just say he's a four. Go to the Knicks. Knicks 101.75 implied total, which would be 16th. 
not too much to look at here. We can go first to poor Zingus. Uh, Zinger is 8,300 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. Need 40 and change. Um, hit it two nights ago, three nights ago, however many nights ago that was. That's the only time he has. What is Porzingis' history against the Bucks? Okay, nothing crazy. Um, I'm not super wild about Porzingis here. How good of an offensive rebounder is he? Not at all. I'll say he's a four, but I'm not even wild about that. Ah. There we go. Tim Hardaway Jr., though, uh, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. He needs 28. Uh, stinker in his last one, but, you know, has had multiple high 30s games. So in a GPP, you know, he's got the range that can get him there. I'm going to say that he's a three. Uh, Courtney Lee is Courtney Lee. Uh, you get what you get with him. Um, you're hoping for 25. He gets there from time to time, but he's just a steady dude. Going to be a four for me. Not a ton to love in this matchup. I will take a look at Cantor, though. Uh, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. So he's getting expensive. Needs 35 to hit value. Um, he's done that quite a few times in the past two weeks. Has the ability to go off um, and hit crazy numbers. But the big takeaway, you know, the the Bucks are piss-poor offensive rebounding team. Um, and Cantor is, you know, one of the best offensive rebounding bigs in basketball. So, while I don't love the price, I would love to see that price a couple nights ago. Um, or, like, you know, I'd love to see, like, a 63 or 64. He would look like an exceptional value, but I'm a big fan of uh, Cantor tonight. Jarrett Jack at 3,600 actually probably needs to be... Nah, he's not getting enough minutes. Never mind. To the Sixers. Sixers hosting the Miami Heat, uh, four-point favorites at home. 103 implied total is 15th, which is not exciting. The Heat are just a difficult team to play in fantasy. So Ben Simmons is 8,600. 8,100 on DK. You need 43. I don't know about that one, but it's a great matchup for him. He's a three for me. I like the matchup. Have they played it all this year? Well, Simmons hasn't played him. Has Embiid? Yeah, they haven't played. So, okay. Great. Embiid is 10-5 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. You're looking 52-ish. Uh, I don't love it. This is a not great matchup for um, just fantasy purposes in general. I'm going to say he's a four. I don't think that he's going to show up very much on the optimizer. It seems like there's way better options. Like, I would rather have Cantor, I think. It just seems safer. He is Embiid. He could go crazy. Who knows? Um, I don't really have a ton of interest in Bobby Covington. Needs 30. I think I'm just going to... I'm good on the rest of that. Let's go to Miami. Heat. 99 point implied total is dead last, 18th on the night. Not a ton to get excited about here either. Josh Richardson is 6,200. I mean, the dude's steady. He's just around that all the time. Uh, one, two, three, four games in the 30s in the past two weeks. I don't think that this is the one you should expect it to go crazy for, but... It's not the worst fit in the world. Um, Wayne is 4,400. Uh, 
4,600 on DK. How has he played in Philly in the past? It's a homecoming for Wayne. Played his high school ball at Episcopal Academy. Uh, he's never really had the chance to show. Played 35 minutes last year. Bomb and threes. I'll say Wayne's a four. I, I can't get too crazy about it. Um, Drogic. Let's see. Does he want to go crazy for making the All-Star game? Needs 31. Did it in the last one. You know, it's fine. Man, not a lot to like tonight. It's kind of a bummer. James Johnson, though, 5,100. Needs 25. Um, can get there. Hasn't really been there a lot. But I like the price, so I'm going to go 3, actually. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I don't really have any interest in Tyler Johnson. You know, Whiteside's minutes are down considerably. I don't... He's at 7,700. That just doesn't feel safe to me. So I'm just going to move on. Thunder now. Um, what I need to do is move this. No, that's just going to keep moving. Never mind. Thunder 112.75 implied total is second. Um, and apparently I forgot to paste the Thunder in. I kind of wish the Thunder weren't on a back-to-back, -back, but such is life. There we go. So Russ is 12-3 on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. We're looking for 60-plus. I mean, you would expect him to be able to have a huge night. He's been over 60 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five of his last seven. It's a great matchup for him. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't he just be able to go ham? I think Westbrook is my stud as of right now. Paul George, 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK, which is just an exceptional price for him. Needs 40 uh, multiple times. 46, 40, 41, 51, 61. Paul George on a bit of a heater. Let's take a look at that chart. No, nope, it's already there. I was looking at it last night. He had uh, bottomed out a little bit here in this beginning of January stretch and then, you know, has been really hot as of late. So yeah, I'm going to say Paul George is a... You know what? He's a fan... He's a FanDuel 3. He's a DraftKings 2. 7,400 for Paul George. I really like that number. Steven Adams is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Steven Adams has to be AD's worst nightmare. He doesn't want to play center at all. And to get Steven Adams, who's just an asshole, <laughs> it's got to be a, it's got to be awful. How's he played against them in the past? Never really looking for his, but I can only imagine that, you know, all but this year, like last year, it was a straight sweep. AD probably just wants to stab himself every time he has to go against Adams. So AD against Oklahoma City. Okay, so he has played well in the past. We'll get to that. Um, I'm going to say Steven Adams is a three. I just kind of like the idea of him being a dick. Now, you know what? He's a four. I don't know who I'm kidding. And then Mello, 6,400, 6,200 on DK. Didn't do a lot last night, which kind of makes me like him more tonight. In some sort of weird gambler's fallacy type way. Needs 32. Uh, he's done it quite a few times in the past two weeks. No problems with it there. I'm not typing that even remotely close to where it belongs. 
and that's it for me. Let's check out the Pels now. Pels, 106.25 implied total is 10th. Apparently I didn't get the Pelicans either. Jesus. Must have skipped that game. So I will be going live tonight at 6. Get excited. Uh, Pelicans. Whew, this is going to be brutal. So AD is 12-3 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK. This is a really difficult matchup for him. But at the same time, you know, it's his team. Uh, Oklahoma City just so good defensively. He's a three for me. If we got a, if we got into a situation where we got a ton of value out there, I would have no problem getting to him. But I think there's just going to be better spots. Um, I'd prefer Westbrook, so we would need enough value to be able to pay up for two twelve thousand guys, and I don't see that coming. So right now, Westbrook would be my priority. Uh, Drew Holiday, eighty two hundred on Fanduel, seventy seven hundred on DK. Hard to not like him. He needs forty. Um, he's had two 50 pointers, got to 37 and 38. Uh, I, I would be more likely to have Drew than AD, but I'm not sure how comfortable I would be doing that um, if I were going Westbrook. Eton Moore on DK looks okay. I don't want to ignore that. But that's probably everything that I would want here. If we get any word that like Rondo is supposed to play more minutes or something, that could be fun. Not expecting to see Miritich tonight. To Phoenix. Uh, the other half... Okay, I definitely grabbed all this stuff. So is there just like a... Did, did I screw it up somehow? Maybe I just stopped doing it. It's certainly pop. You know what? I might not have scrolled down any further. Oh well. Go back to the way that I used to do it. So Suns are hosting the Jazz. I think we're going to really like some of the Jazz side of this, but let's check out the Suns first. Uh, no Isaiah Cannon, uh, grizzly break of the ankle or foot or something like that. So he's out. TJ Warren, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. You're looking 35 for Warren. Um, three straight games in like the mid-ish 30s. Uh, I definitely like Warren here. Still just a three though. Devin Booker, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. You know, 40 would be great. Um, has hit 40 twice in the past couple weeks. I'd be okay with Devin Booker. Josh Jackson, 5,300 and 5,200, so 26. He's been getting the minutes. Um, you know, he had multiple 33-point games. He's hit value three times in the last week and a half. It's starting to come along. Another three, though. Jazz are just a kind of a tough matchup. Um, don't have a ton of interest in Marquise Chris, but I probably should. Also going to just be a three... I'd be happy to use the Phoenix guys as filler, not as uh, things that I seek out. And Alex Lynn, now that uh, Greg Monroe has likely been bought out, I don't know if that has officially gone through or not yet. I think that it has. Uh, Lynn would need 20, which not uh, not the worst idea in the world to look at him potentially. Especially like, you know, if Chandler's gonna bang with Gobert, any little foul trouble could really benefit Alex Lynn. So, again, just a three. Utah, though. Utah gets the the golden goose of the Suns being awful on defense or sort of just hit everything. So I'm really curious to see how this looks. I assume this is going to be another one of those uh, pretty clearly Donovan Mitchell, Ricky Rubio nights. Well, Ricky Rubio for sure. Although his salary has been going up. 
I was all over the Ricky Rubio train. Where is he? There it is. The Ricky Rubio train was a fun train to be on when he was 4,900. That was just comically low. Now that he's 5,900, a bit different. A little bit different. So the Jazz, 108.5 implied total is sixth on the night. Rare that you get the Jazz in a situation where they have that good of an implied total, but that is what happens when you get to play the Suns. Donovan Mitchell, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. So you're looking for 40. Um... He's had two 40-point games in the past two weeks. Have they played the Suns at all? Yes, but that was in October when Mitchell wasn't playing, so hard to take anything from that. Might as well look at Booker as well. Nothing crazy from Booker. Yeah, I like Donovan Mitchell a ton here. In fact... I'm going to say that he's a two. Uh, the combination of having Booker likely be the guy guarding you and the fact that you are basically, you know, the Jazz's version of Booker, somebody that's just going to gun, uh, I love it. Joe Ingles, 4,800 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, so you're looking for 25. Um, has been picking it up lately, a couple games there at value. I don't totally love it because he's not actively trying to get his own shot, but um, Suns break down on D a lot. That could mean Ingles is just standing in the corner, just splash waterfalls. Okay, Rubio. This is the one that's going to scare me. He needs 30. Put up 45 in the last one. He's been over, or he's been at or above for value in his last three and four of his last six. I like him. He's going to pop up a lot on FanDuel's Optimizer. I am a little wary of that price. I would much prefer to go to Mitchell and leave Rubio in the dust, but I don't know what the position shakeout is going to be. Now, Gobert is 7,800 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. So we want 40 out of Gobert. He's done that twice in his last six. Been 34 or higher in almost all of those games. I like him. I don't think I'd get to him. I think I'd rather have Cantor at 7,000 than Gobert. Um, but, oh, it's tricky. I'll have to look into it more. We'll see what Beto says. Derek Favors, 6,200. So he needs 30. He should really be able to feast. He's had four of his last five games at or above value there. So normally I'm not a huge favors fan, but the Suns can make me an exception. And Alec Burks, I mean, if he's going to play the minutes, he got 29 um, two nights ago. If we can assume that he's going to get minutes, I've got him at 20 right now. And he still pops up as someone that could potentially have value at $3,700 salary. I at least want to keep an eye on it and see if we get any word whether or not he's going to get more minutes. I think having two pieces of the Jazz tonight is very reasonable. And then finally, we go to the Sacramento Kings. Kings 104.25 implied total is 12th. They are 13 point underdogs at home to the Golden State Warriors. Um, Bogdan is 4,900 on FanDuel. He's 5,200 on DK. You're looking for 25. Not really doing that lately. Why am I overrating him so much? Uh, maybe I'm not. Maybe it's just a minutes play. Well, I'm not going to go too crazy, but the numbers say that I should look at it, so I'm going to make him a 4. So if he pops up, I can't be totally upset about it. Uh, is Willie Colley Stein supposed to be playing? Did I forget to take him out? Nope, on track to play. Okay, that makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense to me. Uh, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. So looking like 38 
Um, coming back off of an injury, I don't totally love it, but I'll say this. He looks okay on DK at 6,500. So does Zebo. But I don't really want a bunch of kings here. Um, that's just a that's tough sledding against the Warriors. Warriors, they've got the matchup everybody dreams about. So hopefully you can get some piece of this correct. Um, one seventeen point two five implied total, number one on the night. So let's figure them out. This is going to be an important key, I think. Draymond Green is eighty five hundred on Fanduel, eighty two hundred on DK. You need 42-ish. Um, he's done it twice. They haven't, you know, they're, they're pretty well rested. I would expect Draymond to have a decent game. He's a three. Um, Kevin Durant is 10-7, 10-4 on DK. You're looking for basically 55. Uh, two mild games out of him, 67 recently. But they don't have any wings that are any good. So right now I prefer <sighs> man. I prefer Durant to Draymond right now. Clay is 7,000, 6,700 on DK. So you need 35. Um, he's so boomer bust. He's the he's the lowest of the three so far. And then Steph is 10-2 on FanDuel, 10-6 on DK. You need 50 from Steph. So if I had to rank, they all look the same for me tonight. Their salaries are all fine. Um, let's just say I'm, I'm fine with Iguodala as well. So let me add him quick, and then I'll go through my speech. So I, I don't have any... Any qualms with rostering anybody in the Warriors starting lineup. If I had to rank them, I would say that I would go Curry, Durant, Green, Clay, and if you wanted me to include Iguodala in that group, I would put Iguodala above Clay, but not above Draymond. So that is it. That's the list. Now it's time to go see how much that actually corresponds to uh, everything that gets spit out in the optimizer. So let's add these projections and see where we go. See if I missed anybody. Whew. Here we go. And Calc. Yeah, bundle of Russ. Lots of Bogdan, which doesn't make me happy. Kaminsky, Josh Jackson, Gobert, Mitchell. That all makes me happy. Okay, so I would start with Russ and Donovan Mitchell. And then, um, any sign of blood cell? There is a blood cell lineup. Not something I'm going to look at in that particular instance. So let's back back off of that. Almost assuredly need to end up with Frank. So let's just go that direction now. I really liked TJ Warren. So I'd be fine there. What does that leave me at center? Gobert, Turner, Okafor, Allen, Adams, and Len. I'm not <laughs> super excited about that. But I would have preferred to see Cantor, but he didn't show up at all in the 100 lineups, which is interesting. Randall did. So I wonder what triggered that. If I take off Warren, do I still get Randall? No. How do I get to Randall? If I grab Randall, okay, so if I go Randall, it's really difficult to go to Russ. I could still get Mitchell. Hmm. 
Now, something like that I don't hate. Russ, Schroeder, Mitchell, Hardaway, Jackson, Ingles, Nance, James Johnson, Randall. I don't know. That's not not totally my favorite. I think that I would prefer to lock in Russ, lock in Donovan Mitchell. And then... Man, I wish that I liked that more. Um, Gobert, TJ Warren. Oh, that ends up with Evan Turner. Yeah, we're gonna get, we're gonna need some value to pop up. Right now, we are uh, a little short in a good build. You end up having to hope for the right punt. That's never fun. Let's check out DK, and then um. We could all go start our Fridays, depending on when you listen to this. I will be going to start my Friday. Which is just lovely. See what we got. A lot of Henson, a lot of Bledsoe. Okay, a lot of Paul George. It's kind of exciting. I'd be okay going straight down the line for that. Let's go Bledsoe, George, Henson. Can I get to Mitchell or DeRozan? Can get to DeRozan. Bledsoe, DeMar, Paul George, AD, Okafor, Andre Iguodala, Nance, and Henson. I like that a lot. You could probably easily step down off of AD to you know a different power forward to go up at center. Like... Thirty-eight. I mean, you could just easily step down and get eight hundred more dollars for Jared Allen, or that wouldn't be difficult. But I like that lineup to start. Easier to find a base on uh, Cruncher. All right, that's it for me. I'm done. Uh, like I said, I will be back live tonight, starting at six. Uh, no live shows for the weekends, but you know, recap videos will be here. You guys know the drill. Uh, like and subscribe, Twitter, Reddit, Patreon, PayPal, wherever you want to find me, I'll try to be there. Um, best of luck tonight. Bye-bye.